Welcome to Missouri Star Live. We're so happy to be back with you this week after some technical difficulties last week. Thanks for hanging in there and thank you so much for being here with us. I am Misty Doan, I'm your host, and we have Liz behind the camera. Hello, everybody. She's here to uh, ask any of your questions and make sure we can relay those and get them answered for you. And we have our wonderful film crew here as well. Thank you to them for uh, making sure everything runs smoothly. Uh, man, I was a little nervous with the weather we've had. It is, <laughs> it is frigid. It is frigid. We've got some snow, but um, we're happy, happy to be here. So let's see where we have people tuning in from. We love to see uh, your shout outs in the comments. So we have Darla from Anchorage, Alaska. I bet it's snowy there as well. We have Valerie from Alberta, Nazreen from Houston, Holly from Connecticut. What about you, Liz? So we've got Marit from Norway, uh, awesome. Minnie from Virginia. Say it's almost 60 degrees and rainy there, Joan oh, says, in Virginia Beach. Much better than what we're dealing with. And we've got a hello <laughs> from Germany and hello from Arizona. I would take Arizona over Frigid today. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for being here. We've got lots of fun stuff to cover, and we're going to try and save some time at the end to make sure we can get to those questions that we missed last week. Um, so if you have any questions, you can go ahead and um, shout them in the comments now, and we'll circle back to them at the end. That's right. But we have a really fun project uh, today. I'm really excited about it. Liz and I were talking um, about how there are so many awesome 108 inch wide backings now. There's lots of really cute uh, prints and patterns available from lots of different manufacturers and designers. And it's nice to know that it's an option if you, you know, want a beautiful backing for your quilt, of course, but also it can be useful for some other projects. That's right. A couple other things around the house. Yeah, that's right. So we decided to turn our 108 inch backing into an awesome shower curtain. You could also make traditional curtains as well. But this was a super fun project and I, I thought I would walk you guys through how I did it. You can see here, this is a beautiful print um, from Henry Glass. It's available in 108 inch. And it is just this really fun, bright kind of firework print. And I thought this would be really fun for my kids' room. It's just really happy. And it's got this beautiful professional finish. You can see how nicely it finishes up. You can see the seams on this side. Super and, snazzy. And I even added those buttonholes. I'll, sh I'll tell you how I laid that out as well. So what you're going to need is just over two yards of your 108-inch backing. The measurement that we're going to end up cutting this to before we do all of our hems is 74 by 84. So you really need like two and a quarter yards um, to make sure you can get your cuts nice and straight of your 108 inch backing. And then what, what those measurements are is your 84 is going to be the height and the 74 is going to be the width of your shower curtain. So I have one, let me set this one aside, I have one that I've started here. But let me show you what we're gonna do. The first thing you're gonna do is on those 84 inch sides, the long sides, we're gonna do our side hems. And this is really simple. All that we're gonna do is we're just gonna fold over a half an inch and then a, another half an inch and we're gonna press. So let's go ahead and take this over to the iron and just give this a nice press. I started this before I came so that this would not take all day because truly the pressing is kind of the longest, most tedious part of this project, but we all know we can, we can iron, right? So it's not hard at all. So I've, like I've said, I've just turned under about a half an inch and then again, to make sure we don't have any raw edges, they're all enclosed inside. And now we're just gonna take this over to the machine and we're gonna go ahead and make a straight stitch down and I did already start this so that we wouldn't have to hear the, the machine go for too long. But I just used the width of my presser foot as a guide. And so I'm just gonna continue where I left off here. And since I did stop, I'm gonna back stitch. And then make sure this can just sail down the side. I think you absolutely could. That's a really could great idea. That is a good idea. All right. We're just going to zoom down here. It's 
So I'm just going to repeat that because I think my audio was low. So oh. Kathy asked, I wonder if we could make bed sheets out of fat backings. And we think, yes, you could. Oh, Absolutely. Yes, that's a good Something for us to explore. Yeah, it's nice every once in a while to just look at our um, fabric options with new eyes and just consider what all we can do with it. We know we can make quilts, right? But sometimes we want a different project. And so you can see I have just sewn that straight stitch all the way down the side and I already did the other side as well. And so you're gonna have, again, remember that's the long 84 inch sides that you're doing these small hems. And so now let's talk about hemming the bottom and the top. They're done exactly the same idea, just a different measurement. Because we want this to hang really nice and have some body to it, we're gonna do a much wider hem on the top and bottom. And so what I actually did is I grabbed there, nope, that's not it, just a second, my six inch ruler, there we go. I grabbed my six inch ruler and for me, I was working on my big ironing board and so this worked really well for me. So let me just kind of recreate it over here. I took my six inch ruler and I laid it just like this. And the first thing I did is I just folded down my fabric. And so then I knew I had this sleeve that was right at six inches. You can do the same thing by checking multiple, multiple places with your small rulers as you go. But I loved that I could have this whole section and then I just simply slide this out and press it down at the ironing board and it just made it super, super quick and easy. And so that's what I did first. I went through at the ironing board and you can see here, this one's already got the crease in it. So let's just show how we do this. So right here where we can press, I slid that in, make sure it all lines up nice and straight and then simply slide it out of the way to make sure we can press that top edge, just like so. And then once I did that and I had my six inches all the way down the length, I went back and folded under my edge. And I don't know why this way was easier for me instead of doing three and three, but I just liked these big swaths of fabric to know that I was keeping my seams as straight as possible. It felt less like I was guessing. <laughs> and you can kind of fold that edge to your fold line. Exactly. Right? So it helps exactly. you kind of keep so it you straight. So you can see here, here's our, our initial six inch press, press line. And so then we'll just come back and we can fold that one down and press that edge as well. And so it, it just comes together really nice. And you do the exact same thing on both the top and the bottom um, hem. We're going for this nice wide three inch hem on both. And then now we're gonna sew these. And so I did not finish these ones yet, but I wanna show you, I actually did two rows of stitching. So let me get this, this end, cause this is where I wanna start all lined up. And it looks like I actually need to press this side a little bit more. Cause you do wanna make sure it's laying nice and smooth. And I did put some pins in here as I went along just to kind of hold it in place. So I'm gonna do that before I take it to the machine. You don't need many. Just, just a few. Just a few to keep it all lined up. So I'm just gonna add a few more pins just so I'm not fighting with the fabric once I sit at the machine. And you can see I've only put about four or five in there, so nothing crazy. And there's some, there's some conversation in a couple of the chats about could you add some vinyl to the back. We didn't. You could. Um, but, you, like, yeah. it makes it maybe easier to wash the whole thing if Without. you leave it out. Yeah. Yeah, and you can see um, I added those buttonholes. So this is really just like a traditional shower curtain you would purchase in the store. And so you can have, like, a vinyl liner that you can hang behind it just like you would traditionally. I think um, the idea of the iron-on vinyl is great but it doesn't come in wide enough chunks right. um, to, Makes actually, it trickier. to actually cover the whole thing. So it does make it a little bit trickier, but uh, I, I would just use a liner. That's, that's my plan. Okay, so again, we're gonna do two rows of top stitching. I'm starting on the outside edge, and I'm just, again, using my presser foot as a guide. You can use, you know, whatever you want, about an eighth of an inch. 
And I did back stitch there at the beginning. And we're just gonna zoom on down. And the, one of the tricky things about this is because it is a large piece of fabric, it's just like as if you were quilting a quilt top or finishing a quilt top, you do kind of have to manage the bulk of that. So just make sure it's not pulling on your needle as you're working. And if you're, you're looking for this fabric, it's called Smashing Atoms Digitally Printed Backing. And there's links for this and um, a link to all of our 108 inch wide backing in the description of this video. Awesome, thanks Liz. I'm about halfway. You can see I just keep moving the bulk of the fabric up out of the way as I go to make sure I don't have any strain on the needle. Coming down to the end and back stitch again. All right, so now that we have that first row done, we're going to come back and we're going to sew again, but we're going to do it on the bottom side of our, our hem. So let's start down here. And I do like to make sure that these are these ends are matching up really nice before I get started. So everything is nice and straight. Remember to back stitch. And then we're just gonna zoom down this side. Just like so. Making sure you don't have any extra layers underneath you. You don't wanna catch that under your machine. One trick too if you don't have a big table like this at home is to just lump up all that fabric and stick it on there so you can go nicely yeah. down the side. Yeah, exactly. Or um, you can roll it up too, kind of yep. out of the way. I'm not very good at that much forward thinking. I just kind of <laughs> yeah, <laughs> shove I, it around and make it work. The smush and shove. That's exactly right. All right. I'm going to go ahead and stop because I do have one of these already completed with the hems. But I want to show you now how to measure for those buttonholes. And remember, you could also um, do some grommets if you have them. Um, those are available at craft stores and things like that. There's little grommets, little metal ones, and plastic ones that would be a great option for your curtain. Yep, you can but, really customize it to your own look. Exactly. But let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to then mark for where those need to be placed. So the first thing I did is I'm gonna take the top of my curtain. I'm gonna fold it in half like this and I'm gonna give it a press right on that center fold line just so I have kind of a reference point to the center. So we're just gonna press that in place. And then I like to open it up and I like to mark mine from the back side just because then nobody's gonna see it, I don't have to worry about it. And I'm gonna actually use my little ruler, any ruler will work, but I just love this little guy. And so I'm gonna measure down one inch, so you can see I'm using the one inch line of this ruler, just right along the top edge, and I'm putting the three inch line on that center point. And the reason I'm doing that is because I know um, from the calculations I did that all of my um, holes need to be six inches apart, but there's not one directly in the center. There's only 12 um, hooks generally on a shower curtain. And so we're gonna use this center line to mark our first two holes. So let me get a pen or a marker. Here we go, I like this guy. And I'm gonna put one mark right here. Hopefully you guys can see this. And then the other mark, whoops, let me make sure it stays where I want it over here on the six. And so you can see I've got my two marks here and here. Hopefully you guys can see those. It's easier to see on the black, isn't it? There we go. You can see I've made these marks 
And then I'm just going to continue from there down an inch and over six. And you'll keep going until you get all the way to the edge. And that, that is where you're going to place those little grommets or, you know, create your buttonholes uh, to have this beautiful finished shower curtain. And it was really simple. I just used the buttonhole foot and setting on my machine. And let me show you how these turned out because they look really, really great. So you can see here, here are my finished buttonholes. And they just turned out so great. And they're finished all the way through. And then I can just slide the hooks right through, right there, through there, just like you would on a traditional And so curtain. if you look at your machine, you'll probably have a buttonhole setting or yes. a buttonhole foot or some combination of that. And every machine's a little bit different. But exactly. Practice on some scratch. But one thing I found, because I actually, I don't do a lot of clothing sewing, and so I hadn't ever used the buttonhole setting on my machine prior to making this project, but there are a ton of videos out there from different sewing machine companies, so be sure to look that up. There's also great instructions in your manual if you still have that handy. Um, so there's lots of options out there. Don't be afraid to try, but definitely start on some scrap fabric before you start on your finished project, but it was so much easier than I expected it to be. It was a very pleasant surprise. So I encourage you guys to try it. It was really, really fun to do. And I'm just really happy with how this came out. It hangs beautifully. The nice wide hem uh, gives it a little bit of weight and keeps it um, nice and straight. Nothing's bunching up. And it was just a really fun and simple project. I love this, this what did you say it was called? This Adam's print, something Adam's? Yes, Adam Smash. Adam Smash. It's just so bright. Smashing and happy. Adams. I'm sorry. Oh, Smashing, Smashing Adams. Adams. Okay. And this one was by Henry Glass. Yes. So. It's so bright and happy. It really is. I think it will brighten up my kids' bathroom and they will like it. So I'm going to fold this one up. I want to talk just a little bit more about the backings before we move on to questions. Yep. And there's also just a couple questions about what you've made here. Sure. Um, did it matter what stitch length you were using and what kind of thread you were using? That's a great question. I just use my standard cotton thread and I am usually somewhere between a 2.0 and a 2.5 on my stitch length. Um, I just did standard, but like I did, I said, I did back stitch on any of these finishing um, stitches to make sure it was nice and secure because um, it's going to get tugged on as you move that shower curtain around. So you want to make sure your stitches are locked in place. But and then yeah, it was super easy. Kimberly also asked, did, would you consider some interfacing, at least the top hem, so it would wear better? I, I wondered about that, but honestly, it, it hangs so nicely. I think this is such a, a wonderful quality fabric, and by having that extra layer in there, I didn't find that I needed it. I originally planned to put interfacing in there and then opted not to. So you absolutely could, um, but I would again, I would kind of test it out. When you cut this down, you are going to have some extra fabric because you only need that 74 by 84. So use that, those extra pieces to kind of test it out and see how, if you like how it feels. If you think you want that extra stability of the interfacing, by all means. Go for it. Go for sure. it. Absolutely. And then just one more great sure. tip from Rosie. She says, lay, on, lay it on top of the vinyl liner to mark the buttonholes. You that's can a, use the liner to mark the buttonholes. That's a great tip, too. Also a great tip. Exactly. I love that. Then you don't have to measure it. And meanwhile, I took all the time and did the math. I should have just said, get your liner, <laughs> lay it on top. <laughs> Works great. But yeah, it worked super great. And I loved this print because it wasn't directional. But I did find that occasionally you find these great 108-inch backs. And you're like, oh, this is so cool. I love this. This is um, a print from Wyndham. And it's just these awesome globes, kind of map prints. It's really beautiful. But once I started looking at it, I realized it is directional because of all of the words on the map. And so I couldn't handle having all the words <laughs> on the side. <laughs> and so, th and the only reason it makes a difference is because of how this is printed, um, the 108, it, it runs sideways on the bolt, right? right? Because the words are made to go with the width of the fabric. And so because of that, you would actually need to buy a little bit more fabric because remember, the, the width, how do I explain this? The tallest part, the up and down part, is the widest part. <laughs> right. That's the 84 inches. 
And so you, you need a little bit more when your words are, are running that direction. So just right. be mindful of that when you sh are shopping for these prints. Um, but it's not a whole lot difference in the fabric, but you just need to keep that in mind. The two inch, I mean, the two yards will be a little short um, for it all to work out. But I just think this is such a fun print. I, I still want to finish this one up now that I've realized we don't want all the globes on their side. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Super yeah. pretty. Any and other questions about this specifically? I think um, just in case you're wondering, that print is called 7Cs, Digitally 7Cs. Printed Packing. It's so cute. I really, really love it. I have a, a, a love of globes and maps anyway. I have lots of globes on our bookshelf up in our loft at home. And so this just kind of speaks to my heart. But my kids will love these, these bright prints also. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope this opened your eyes. And remember, um, it works for a shower curtain. It can also work great for curtains as well. You can use these exact same ideas. You don't even have to add the buttonholes. You can just have that pocket and slide your curtain rod right through it. So lots of great uses uh, for this project. And yeah, let's go ahead and move on, Liz, and cover some of the questions that we yes. asked last week. So I have a handful of questions from last week. I just want to do a quick recap for sure. those that joined with Mills. So about two and a quarter to two and a half yards is That's what right. you need for this shower curtain project. And we've linked to all of our backings here below. And then just adding a three inch hem at the top and bottom, and you've added like a half inch folded on the sides. Exactly. So it's an, actually a quick project and really gratifying. Yeah, it really comes together so fast. And and it's fun to know, like, I honestly thought of all the Tula lovers who just right? they can't get enough Tula pink fabric. And she has the most beautiful 108 inch backs. And so, you know, ha wouldn't it be so happy to have this awesome Tula print hanging in your bathroom? It would just be the most cheerful thing. So just, Absolutely. I hope it inspires you and opens your eyes to a new idea and a new project. And it really is so quick and easy. So give yep. it a shot. Don't be afraid of that buttonhole setting on your machine. That's <laughs> Test right. Test it out. It was a pleasant surprise. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So now we have a few questions from last week. Um, we were going to do a Q&A. So I'm going to start with what are your most and least favorite things to work with? Okay. So I would say my most favorite things to work with is I love, if I'm working in rainbow fabric, I'm probably loving whatever I'm doing. I love bright fabrics. They, they sing, speak to my soul. They make my heart sing. Um, and so that was probably my favorite. <laughs> my least favorite, that's hard because there's not many things that I just straight up don't like. I love new projects. I love trying new things. Um, I'm not crazy about Quilt As You Go. I know people love Quilt As You Go, but it's not my favorite. It's not your favorite. I that's really fair. love piecing. So, um, I think that's my answer today. I don't know what it would be tomorrow, but I'll go with that. Well, and this question is even more timely today, I think. Would you rather be somewhere tropical, snowy, or woodsy right now? Oh, right now, tropical, for sure. <laughs> I usually love a little bit of snow, but um, I've had a, enough. I need some, some sunshine and sand, I think. <laughs> Um, Jan had asked, Misty, what's your favorite color and why? And how often do you get to use it in your quilts? Oh, oh that's a tricky one. I love blue. I really love blue and green. And I actually use it a lot, I would say. But like I said earlier, in quilting and in if I'm making a quilt for myself, I will almost always use um, pretty much the whole rainbow. I love bright colors, happy colors. Um, I also really love blue and white quilts. Um, so something something in there <laughs> with stars, lots of stars. Stars. All right. Um, we've also had several different people asking, how do you close that charm pillow on point, also known as the Misty pillow? Oh, yes. I have loved seeing all of you share these uh, charm pillows on point. I never in my wildest dreams thought you guys would love them as much as you do. I know it's a fun project, but it's been so much fun to see all of you guys share them. So thank you for that. If you haven't seen it, it's from a, a triple triple play we did a few months back, yeah, right? In November. November. Okay, so Liz prepared me for this one a little bit. So we actually have <laughs> one of these charm pillows on point. This is what it looks like. Um, it's super, super simple. And if you remember, you can make this pillow and a little bitty uh, pin cushion out of one charm pack. So it's a really great project. But when you finish it, you have kind of this awkward opening in the back like this. And it does require 
some dreaded dun, 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 hand stitching. So it's nothing to be afraid of. We can tackle this. Good sound effects. I know, right? Yes. Here we go. Okay. All right. So I've got, oh, I got, pulled my needle out and unthreaded it at the same time. I thought it was so fancy having this ready to go, and now I'm going to have to thread it on camera anyway. So give me just a second. The pressure's on. The pressure's on. So Jan's asking, what is the quilt pattern behind you today? That is our Missouri Star quilt pattern. Of course, Very now it's going to be difficult. Just a second. We try again. One of the cool things about your charm pillow, too, is you can use a charm pack. You can use a bunch of leftover charms from a bunch of charm packs. Exactly. It's a great scrap buster as well. You can cut down a layer cake if you've been working on a go. larger 10-inch squares project, and you have a few of those left over. Exactly. It's really fun. And honestly, you can try this out with any size square. I think it would be really fun to see, you know, with yeah. uh, to make it with layer cake squares, but you would obviously need a fewer number, or you could make a really giant, <laughs> uh, you know. Boy, that sounds cozy. I know, it does sound cozy. Sounds like my kids would love that. So now I finally have this threaded, sorry. Thanks for bearing with me. And so um, let's make sure we get in here really close because this, I think what everybody wants to know is the stitch that we use to finish this. So I'm gonna actually slide my needle inside here and come out right where I stopped um, stitching with my machine. So you can see there's my needle. I'm coming from underneath. And I like to just pinch my layers together like so. And it, it's really easy to do this because I've sewn to this point with my machine. My quarter inch is already turned under. So I'm just continuing that across. And so my thread is actually coming out on this side in this fabric. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go directly across from there on this other square and I'm gonna go down with my needle right along where I want that seam line to be about a quarter inch and come up. So let's do that. And then I'm gonna, again, this is hard to hold and make sure you guys can see it. Then I'm gonna go straight across back on the other side, in, and remember, we're putting our needle in directly across where that thread comes up. So in, down about an eighth or a quarter inch, and back up. And I call this a ladder stitch. I don't know if that's actually correct. <laughs> um, that's just what I've always heard it referred to. And I just go back and forth and back and forth down. And I love this stitch because it's pretty much invisible. You don't even see it at all um, once you finish it. And so we'll just continue back and forth. And you can see it just pulls it together. I've already taken about that much and you don't see the stitches at all. It finishes so nice and it's just actually really quick. It's one of my favorite stitches for any type of hand sewing that I need to do because it just disappears and it looks really, really nice. So hopefully you guys could see that. Um, it's, a, it's a great stitch. So that's how I finish it off. That's the excuse to sit down and watch some Netflix and you know, do a little bit of hand st stitching, right? That's so. right. All right, anything else that we need to cover from last week? I think that's that's all we were able to capture. Guys, okay. we will do another Q&A in the future, of yeah, course. We'll and sure always ask good. your questions. We love to answer them as we go. So that's thank awesome. you for joining us. Yes, thank you so much for being here. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, shower curtain project and it opened your eyes to the possibilities that are out there with, with fabric. Um, and as always, thank you so much for being here, and I hope you have a wonderful week. We will see you next time. We've got some fun things in store, so have a wonderful week. Stay warm. See you soon.